So in this video, I want to go through 10 top tips for using Smart Notebook. I'm using Smart Notebook Basic, which you can download for free, but it does mean that when I'm not connected to a smart board, I'm going to have this watermark in the bottom corner, so just ignore that. If you want to download it for yourselves, go to the Smart website. You can download the Basic version. It comes as a trial. When the trial expires, it'll carry on working without the bells and whistles, but the Basic version will work fine. So for preparation and investment resources, it's, it's good to have Smart Notebook Basic on your computer at home. But you will get this watermark in the corner. If you're on a laptop or another machine, as soon as you plug that machine into a smart branded screen or board, then the watermark will go. I'll look at these 10 things. I'm gonna look at um, how to add text boxes, uh, the shape to group feature, how to lock things, graph papers, making your own backgrounds, creating your own gallery area, using rub and reveal techniques, uh, the magic pen, how to customize the tools, the fonts and pens and so on, and how to customize the toolbar as well. Okay, so we'll start by looking at text boxes. There's two ways of doing text boxes. I'll show you both ways. Um, the first way is to add your text first. So you can put in here, choose your font size and style. And you can always resize the writing after you've, after you've typed it. Use the arrow to move it around. I'm then gonna click on the shapes tool just here. I'm gonna choose a shape. So in this case, I'm gonna choose a rectangle I'm going to draw a rectangle over the top and then need to fill that shape in. So I'm going to click on my shape and then choose a color from here. I'm going to choose a fill color. So it's something pale and I can change the line color if I want. You'll notice that this has gone over the top of my writing. So I just right click, go to order and send to back. So my text is now been pinged in front. The box has gone behind the writing. These are two separate objects for the moment. So I'm going to just select both by clicking and dragging across the two. And I can either control and G on my keyboard or click on one of the two triangles in the corner here and go down to group and group. And that is now a grouped object. If you do it with the text in the box separate, it gives you a much more sort of precise placement of where the writing is inside the text box. But the easier way, I think now, is to start off by drawing your, your shape. So again, I'm going to click on my, my rectangle here. I'm going to draw out my, my text box. I'm going to fill it with colour. So again, I can fill from there, or I can go to the paint bucket and I can fill, let's fill this one with yellow, the arrow, and then double click on my box and just start typing you'll put the text straight inside. You don't get a lot of control over the positioning. You've obviously got left, right, and center. So I'm gonna center the writing in there. Um, if I made the box really big, it'll be stuck at the top. To bring it down, I would need to use spaces to, to bring that down. So you get a little less control over positioning, but actually you can then just make the box fit, which is quite nice like that. I'm then going to clone, which gives me another one, and I can then select both of those, and I can clone like that. I could then clone again to give myself eight boxes. If I wanted to change all of these colors in one go, I can just highlight those four and go to the fill color and I can just change all of them in one click and all four of them will change. Because the text isn't grouped to the box, it's much easier to edit the text. So I can then go into here and I can, so this might be sort of an answer, whereas this might be a question you write them in and then I can move these boxes around and jumble them up but it's much easier to edit the text it's harder to edit the text in a, in a grouped box because you've got to ungroup it change the text and regroup it so text boxes are nice and easy and um, while I'm on the subject here of, of sort of grouping objects I'll look at the shape to group feature so I'm gonna put a couple of a couple of objects here and I'm just gonna fill them in with some color just for a second let's just choose some colors just so I've got an object to um, play around with here we go now one feature you might find when you're connected to a smart board is that if you select some objects and you shake them it groups them together that doesn't work at the moment on, on my version I've just faked that but it'll work on the smart board plugged in I find that a really annoying feature because I accidentally drag things across the screen my finger just catches on the board and everything ungroups so if you find that annoying and you want to turn that feature off you suddenly find things are ungrouping or grouping without you really knowing why um, go to the preferences and on the general settings here, you can turn off the shape gesture to group and ungroup, and then it won't do it. So that's that's one way to do it. The other thing you can do is when you've got a grouped object, if you don't want it to be accidentally ungrouped, is you can right click and you can lock it. And what you can do is you can lock it, but you can allow it to move. So I'm gonna lock it and allow move. That means that this object is locked together, but I can still move it around like a normal object. While we're on the subject of locking objects, you can also allow it 
to move and rotate, you can allow it to have horizontal move or vertical move. So if you wanted objects on the screen that you could only be moved left or right, then you can allow horizontal move and they can move that way and that way, but they can't be moved up and down, they can only be moved horizontally. Likewise, I can allow vertical move with things can be up and down, but they can't move left and right. Lock in place will fix it absolutely in place like that. To unlock something that's been locked in place, just click on it, go to the padlock, and just choose unlock and then that object can be moved around again. Now a request I get a lot of in training sessions is where are the graph papers and where do they live. They will be in the gallery if you've got the gallery installed so over on the left hand side of the screen underneath the picture is a icon of a painting that's the gallery. If you go into the gallery and you search in the gallery you can find loads of cool things in here. Now one thing is that graph paper does not come up really easily on the search for the word graph but if you search for grid I'm going to search for grid and click on there and then down under backgrounds and themes you'll have different grids and graph papers and for any of these you just need to grab it and drag it onto the page like so or you can double click on it and it will send it onto the page. What I have found in, in doing training sessions again with people who want particular, particular papers for mathematics or for science, they're not always happy with the papers that Smart gives you here. There are online sites that give you graph paper and you can copy and paste those pictures in. I've got this website here, virtual-graph-paper.com and there's also one here called Really Sketch. Uh, in these websites you can customise the paper. There's normally a setup, so over here I've got setup and I can change how big the cells are, I can change how many subdivisions there are. Likewise on, on Really Sketch, same thing, I can go to options, I can change the grid size, how many, how many sort of boxes it's divided into, you've got lots more control over it. And then what I'm going to do is within Smart Notebook, let's go back to Smart Notebook, I'm going to click on the desktop capture tool. You could also use a snipping tool in Windows for this as well if you want to. And the desktop capture tool will allow me to click on the square. I'm then just going to drag out an area of, of graph paper that I want to copy, make it as big as I can. It'll take the picture. I'm going to send that to a new page in Smart Notebook. Go back to Smart Notebook, and there it is. And then I can resize that, rearrange it, move it around how I want it to be. And as a last thing, I can click on that image and make sure I've sent it to the back, which it is because it's the only thing on here, and I'm going to lock. I'm going to lock it in place and that image will then be the background and it won't move by mistake. One other thing I can then do is to um, view, zoom the page width and it will stretch the whole page out to fill the screen. An additional thing then, within the gallery you have an area here called my content and that my content area is, is open for you to put your own things in. So I can put anything into that my content area. So this graph page here, which I've just made and I want to use over and over again, I might draw some axes lines on it. I might use the, the lines tool first and maybe let's draw some axes on there. I could spend some time putting numbers on and stuff like that. That's all cool. And then I want this page to go into the gallery so I can use it over and over again. What I'm going to do is right click on that image or I can click on the triangle giving the same options and at the very bottom here it says add page to gallery. And when I do that it opens up your my content area and then I put some subfolders in but at the moment it's here. These are my previous times I've done this and there's the one I've just done, there's the graph I've just done. Whenever I want that graph paper I just open up Smart Notebook and I just go into the gallery, go into my content and I just drag out that page and give myself another copy of it and say here's one I prepared earlier. Back to my pages you can see I've got my graphs and the other graphs that I've drawn there. So the my content is also worth putting in uh, your own images. If there's pictures you use a lot, things like the school logo and other graphics you find using quite a lot, put those in my content, they're always there for you. In terms of a basic interaction technique, Rub and Reveal is one of my particular favourites. Let's insert an image there and I'm going to add some labels. So I might label that one and I might label that one and I might label that one like so. I'm going to add some text so we'll call that skull and we'll call that the humerus and we'll call that the femur. Um, I'm just going to move those slightly, there we go, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the pen tool, I'm going to make the pen uh, white and fat, so I'm going to click on the pen here, I'm going to click on the colours and make the pen white, I'm going to click on the thickness and make the pen quite chunky, make it as chunky as I can really, and then I can just scribble 
in white pen and what it does is basically if it's the same color as the background of your page it makes the labels disappear completely what i can then do is click on the the eraser and the rubber and then i can just rub out the text to bring that back when i want to do it with a class and I'll reveal the answer so you can hide parts of a question you can hide words you can hide parts of a diagram um, I'll just do that again I'll do it in grey this time so you can see what's going on I'll make it big and then you just blob the colour on I mean it could be you can give them just one letter or you can just get rid of the whole whole thing I'll just do that and then the rubber will bring it back like so and so I use that a lot for hiding parts of a picture parts of a sentence the answers to a question and then the, the rubber the eraser just brings them back afterwards another really useful tool in here is the magic pen nobody gets really excited by the magic pen um, and I expect to do some really cool things it has three uses the first use is the one that everybody finds out first which is actually a little bit rubbish when you write the magic pen after a few seconds the writing disappears and I've not found many uses of that to be honest. The two good uses, one is if I draw a circle with the magic pen and it's going to be a neatish circle, it'll spotlight. So you can draw your class attention to a particular part of the screen and just click on the X to get rid of that. So I can draw a circle around that answer there and it will pop up with the spotlight and that spotlight can then be moved around. I can click on the edge and I can resize it if I want to and move that around the diagram which is quite useful. If I draw a square or a rectangle with the magic pen, it'll zoom in on that part of the screen. Boom, there we go. And I can zoom in some more with that little slider. Again, I can move that up and down or around the screen to show a bit of the screen in more detail. Magic pen's kind of useful. The first use, it disappears after a few seconds. That's a bit rubbish. The circle for spotlighting and the square for zooming are really useful. Final couple of tips. Um, the first one is that if you want to customize the, the tools on here, you can to a certain extent. So if I've got my pens here, you've got a choice of four pens and four other pens. If you wanted those colors to be different, you didn't want red, you wanted um, purple or something like that, I can click on the tool and then from the properties down the left hand side, if I click on my tool, click on the properties down here, I can change that color. So I'm gonna choose purple instead and I could choose a particular thickness I can change the line style whatever I want to do and then at the very bottom here I can choose save tool properties and then that tool will no longer be a red pen that will be a purple a purple pen instead I could do the same for any others I want these to be highlighters I want these to be a particular shade I can customize all four pens all eight pens um, to be how I want them to be um, the same is true for the text as well. If you don't want these particular fonts, you want a different font, I can click on the font that I want to change. I can then change that from Arial into any of my other fonts if I want to. And then I just have to click Save Tool Properties and then that will change to be that particular font. So if there's a particular school font you find yourself using, you want to get rid of Comic Sans and use something else, or you want to use um, a particular serif font that the, the school has said you can use, then you can click on the tool you want to change and then set that to be the default. So that one of the, the six you have by default is, is your, your school font. You can change all six of these to be different colors, different sizes, um, different font styles, and you can customize the shapes as well. If you want them to be filled in and particular colors, you can do that. You can also, if you want to, customize the toolbar completely up the top here so if you either click on the cog over on the right hand side here or you can right click it'll pop up with the customization tool now one thing I did earlier on I used the screen capture tool so I picked up the screen capture and that's actually not on by default if you install smart notebook you won't find that screen capture tool there where it is is on this toolbar here so I right click on the toolbar and I then drag the screen capture tool up and I just drop it onto onto the screen and it then appears up there. If you want to put other buttons on here, if you want to have the properties or you want to have um, the smart keyboard or whatever, volume control, any of these tools here, I'll put one on, I'll put on the um, the clear ink button. I shall drag this up, drop it into that space there and it'll then put that icon on there for me if I want to use it. If you want to get rid of anything, if there's buttons on there you never use, I'm just going to get rid of that, just pull that icon off and it'll be gone and then just say done when you've finished. The other thing you can do, having just shown you how to change all the custom toolbars and all the custom tools and make them different colors, if you decide that actually you don't want to do that, then by right clicking on the toolbar here, you can restore default tool properties and all the tools will go back to the way they are when you install Smart Notebook from the very beginning. Um, so the purple will go and so on. So I'm gonna do that now. 
I'm going to click on restore, default tool properties and say done and then my tools if I look back here now will be back to how they were when I first installed Smart. So that's 10 tips for using Smart Notebook. I hope you found that useful. Do check out some of my other Smart Notebook videos which go through some of the other features of how to use these tools. I'll make a few new ones uh, soon which go again go through some interactive techniques like rub and reveal and drag and drop uh, and so on and look at some of these things I've just done in a little bit more detail as well. Any questions please put them in the comments. As always with these videos please Please like and subscribe so I, I can get a feeling that people like these videos and I'll go make some more. Um, I hope you found that useful and um, thanks again for your time. Cheers. Bye bye.